bitches, it's me Pallavi, and this week on Dirty Science, we're talking about orgasms. Just male orgasms though, because if we start talking about female orgasms, I might cry. Just kidding, we're talking about both kinds. Suck it boys, women have orgasms too. Allegedly. Orgasms. Coming. Climaxing. All appropriate words to gas up your gals when they pose a selfie and also to describe one-eighth of my sexual experiences with men. Orgasms are the peak of a sexual experience, marked by the release of hormones, muscle contractions, and an altered state of consciousness. For men, orgasms and ejaculation are separate physiological processes. Orgasms are associated with increased breathing and heart rate, high blood pressure, pelvic muscle contractions, asshole contractions, and facial grimacing. But we've all been there. Right? Again, an orgasm is the peak of sexual pleasure. And also when you look the most stupid, because <laughs> God loves playing jokes. Bragster. Ejaculation is controlled by the autonomic or involuntary nervous system and is split into two phases, emission and expulsion. The emissions phase is a series of steps that involves all sorts of glands, ducts, vesicles to move fluids into the urethra. Expulsion is the ejection of semen from the urethra. The emission part of ejaculation, the buildup, is partially under cerebral control. So it can also be induced through having visual stimuli. Sexy ladies. Or men. Or dogs. I regret that last one. Okay, so when men orgasm or come, they have pre-cum, they come, they came, and if they came inside you, then technically, you're fucked. For women, orgasming is separate from reproductive purposes. There might be an evolutionary reason for the orgasm that made more sense for our ancestors than it does for us now, and that reason is ovulation. There's what's known as induced ovulation, which is ovulation that's caused by a surge in hormones as experienced when women have orgasms, or there's spontaneous ovulation, which is what women undergo today. Induced ovulation is older than spontaneous ovulation and takes place in other species. Also, the distance of the clitoris from your copulatory canal, also known as your love tunnel, increases with the evolution of spontaneous ovulation. So it seems like way back when the clitoris was used to make women orgasm, causing a surge in hormones and therefore ovulation. But now we can come without kids. Coming without kids, brought to you by your fingers, other women's fingers, and sometimes a vibrator. So what are the benefits of orgasms? Well, it feels fucking great. And that's because the hormone oxytocin is being released from your neurons. Oxytocin, the love hormone, and also very addictive. Men, why do you think once you sleep with women that she won't get off your dick? It's not your dick. She's getting high off her own drugs. You just happen to be inside her at the time. Oxytocin helps with bonding, as best described by the classic Prairie Vole versus Montane Vole study. We all know it, come on. Prairie voles are rodents that mate for 24 hours, and it takes a lot of work, and then they're bonded for life. Whereas Montane voles, which are slightly genetically different from their cousins, have a bunch of one-night stands, and can't be bothered to stick with their partner after. I want to be clear, I'm not slut-shaming, I'm fucking jealous. If you repress the release of oxytocin and another hormone called vasopressin in prairie voles, they act similarly to Montane voles, and don't maintain lifelong partnerships. They actually found that in the the reverse situation, by administering oxytocin to montane voles, there was no difference in the behavior of the montane voles. Because the difference between monogamy and what most people call college is that the monogamous prairie vole has receptors for oxytocin and vasopressin in parts of the brain associated with reward and reinforcement, whereas the montane voles did not. So literally the difference between prairie voles and montane voles in maintaining these lifelong partnerships are just receptors in part of their brains. Benefits other than bonding, which is precarious at best, include for men a decrease in the likelihood of prostate cancer and an increase in their mortality rates. Orgasms alleviate pain. In women, sexual satisfaction increases with age. My personal theory is either we feel more empowered to say what we want, or like with the simplest of tasks, we just do it better on our own. There's also increased brain activity in women when they orgasm, and orgasms help you fall asleep, which is why your bitch is up so... <laughs> I can't keep... I can't keep hating on men, this is too easy, okay. And orgasms can help you fall asleep, which is why all the men I fuck fall asleep right after and I have to order my own Uber pool. It's because I'm so good at it. I'm good at sex stuff. I'm really, I'm great. 
Speaking of being good at it, I make a lot of jokes about women not being able to orgasm because of men, but it's only because of facts and data. There is a significant gender gap when it comes to orgasms. A study from the National Survey of Sexual Health and Behavior showed that when asked about their last sexual encounter, 91% of men and 64% of women said that they orgasmed. This study was mostly heterosexual. Another gap in information that's a giant problem. 92% of men and 98% of women said that they had this last sexual encounter with someone of the opposite sex. This is important to keep in mind because 64% of the women said that they came versus 91% of men, but 85% of men said that their partner had an orgasm, meaning there's a 21% difference between how many women men thought came versus how many actually came. Also interesting, men are more likely to come when sex includes vaginal intercourse, whereas women are more likely to come when they engage in a variety of sexual acts and when those acts include oral sex or vaginal intercourse. So suck it up and slurp it down, men. I believe enthusiasm is the most important factor in whether you're good at sex or not. I mean, that and girth, of course. Bye! Honestly, this covers just a little bit about orgasms. I could spend all day talking about them and all night not having them. I might do a follow-up episode that includes more information about orgasms, but in the meantime, to find out more about orgasms, tune in to your partner's sexual needs, you fucking idiots. Just fucking ask questions. There's a cricket. Can you hear the cricket? Grasshopper, whatever the fuck, I'm out. <laughs> Why am I so mad? Probably because I'm not coming. Okay, bye. <laughs>